Now, somewhere, somehow, someone's gonna pay. And um, you were saying before the screening that there is uh, some things in the films that particularly might click at this uh, contemporary political climate of ours. So uh, would you elaborate on that? Oh, there's a lot of wild things going on. Yeah, a lot of wild things going on. Like, you know, there were a lot of extras that were being, you know, that were, it was a lot of consensual sex, I would say, in the trailers with the bodybuilders. <laughs> so, so that all happened, but it wouldn't, you wouldn't, and the producer had a button in the set, he said, he was wearing a, a button every day and said, I fuck extras. <laughs> you know, and I told, I sprang to a buddy because this, he could never wear that today in a movie set. Never, ever. He'd be like castigated and thrown out of the business. But <laughs> the atmosphere back then is way different. So this kind of answers the question that I've, has been going on in my, in my mind for for the past, let's say, month or so, ever since the Weinstein thing broke up. I was like, how come Joel Silver wasn't ever getting involved in any of this public discussion, at least until now. Oh, no, I mean, he, he was, he didn't do it, it was just like a joke, more or less. You know? Yeah, I'm sure of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> different climate. I've met him so only once, ago. but uh, <clears throat> I could tell that there are some yeah. similarities maybe with Harvey, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> Do we have any questions from the audience? Yeah, I have one. Um, so, uh, as I understand, Vernon Wales was called in the last minute to do the part of Bennett. I guess it's all Who was the guy before him, and why did you let him go? <laughs> well, he would, actually, the guy died, but I can't, I, his name escapes me, but he, he, there was a, there was another actor in the, this, it was a scene on the beach, and I filmed, I didn't, I never filmed it, but I rehearsed this other actor. And Vernon Wells was the second choice always. And the other actor we did, we rehearsed the scene with Arnold, but he was, he played it so weak that I realized that he could never be the nemesis to Arnold. They, he was just, Arnold was overwhelming to this other actor. And um, so I, I just fired him on the spot. And then I called and said, get, get me Vernon Wells, because he had done the road warrior, right? So I already knew he was like a part of just, a mistake in the casting, but we never actually filmed the other guys. So the rumors have been out there, but it is true there was another actor in that part that was fired before he actually was on film. And um, and Vernon and Vernon, you know, I didn't know till I read all these reviews that he was kind of playing it gay, as people said. Oh, he seems like. But I only told him you're in love with Arnold, you know. <laughs> it's like a love hate thing, like you know. So he kind of played like that, and but all this chain mail showed up for the costume, and it became like that became like a gay thing to wear in like West Hollywood and all that. So people thought, oh, his costume was was. But I, also I never intended that. I don't think the actor. Did. I have a follow up concerning Bennett. That uh, he survived an explosion, he survived a burning furnace and electrocution, but then a lead pipe was the final thing that could actually kill him. Why? <laughs> yeah, why? I don't know. Because I wondered how he got off the boat, and I kept saying, like, and then the producer said, no, no, he, you don't see him jump off the side before, because you only saw the one side of the boat. So he said, we'll just know that he jumped off the boat before the He's explosion. He's holding the rudder while it explodes. <laughs> <laughs> Is he doing that? Yeah. <laughs> can't explain it. Yeah. He's just that badass. No one, no one questioned it. But, uh, yeah, we were trying to find the ending. The original ending, actually, of the movie in the script was a boat chase. They left the island and they chased on boats and they were fighting in the water for like days. And the movie was skyrocketing in cost and so forth. So the studio said, we can't afford this boat ending. This is the middle of the shooting. So I said, what can we afford? They said, we, you have to shoot a location that we already own. 
So where's that? The back lot of 20 cents yeah. box. So I just roamed around there and I found this basement, furnace basement. So we just created the whole scene there, which actually worked out well because it was confined. Damn. It came out much better than the boat chase cool. the fighting on a rowboat somewhere. So, it, but that was, that was the original, it was on boats, but this is how it ended up. A question about uh, Bennett uh, surviving the boat explosion. I, I always thought he faked his death to avoid suspicion because he was actually on the side of the bad guys. Right. And he used to be on John's team and everybody else on his own team was killed. So it would make sense that he would fake his own death uh, so that uh, Kirby wouldn't suspect Yes, that's yes, weird thing. switched sides. But I actually had a different question. It's uh, not so directly uh, direct, uh, related uh, to your work on the movie, but uh, on things that we plaster on the screen afterwards, the subtitle and also the one-liners. Uh, the famous quote uh, where Arnold is holding Sully and lets him go and says, I lie. Quite often in the subtitles, especially at the time, uh, the subtitles are toned down in case of any foul language, but in this particular case, uh, it was actually spiced up, and uh, in the Finnish subtitles, at least one version of this, it said, uh, paska, which is Finnish for, I talk shit, <laughs> and it was a very uh, innovative thing to say in uh, movies at that time, and I thought it was impressive that they would make an exception in this movie, because I've never seen subtitle like that. Oh, that was a subtitle here, I told shit. Yeah. yeah. Is that yes. translated yes. as well as, is that as good as the other one? Literally, to, I told shit. Yeah. And the English version is actually, I lied, so it doesn't, uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's clean. But the other, the other movie, uh, Class of 84, that I made, that got banned all over the place. <laughs> Scandinavia, Denmark, the whole, <laughs> Area around here, Finland, Norway, Scandinavia. Three times in Finland. Yeah. <laughs> Three times. Yeah. Three times. Great, great movie. So yeah, go see that because this version is the actual original version that's playing here. Wow. Nice. With the nudity and all that. That they didn't play. Okay, one from the front row. Um, about Sully's chain. Did he crochet it himself? You mean the uh, Bennett's, 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 Bennett's chain mail? Did he crochet because it's not made of chain? It's fabric. Oh, it, oh yeah. I didn't know it was like a costumer did it. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I think um, it's it's Bennett's mother <laughs> who made that. And a letter of friends. Yeah, well, the Christmas present or something like that. The people dress up as him whenever he goes. There's all these screens in the movie and people dress up like him. Yeah. So. Also, uh, how did you decide to go on with the same musical theme through the movie? Like on the, I don't know, the English or French name for the movie, Sherburin Sateenvarjat. Do you? Uh, the Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Yeah, you know, the, uh, the French, film. French yeah. movie, which has the same musical theme going throughout the whole mu movie. How did you decide? Well, this was the composer, James Horner. He became a very famous composer. Yeah. He actually died recently, so he did many, many major, major films. He did, and then the song at the end was the uh, Andy Summer from Police. He's the other lead, lead guy in Police with Sting time so he was very famous but the main main theme you know when things get exciting yeah it's always the same theme starting to play yeah that's typical of these 80s kind of action movies I think we can probably all agree it's a perfect movie yes, yes. Uh, if you would do it again, starting with the same script, uh, same setting, what would be different? Uh, 
Nothing really. I did to that. You're right. I mean, I, Thank I, you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. There was a funny. There was a funny bit in there when um, when the. I reminded me of the trap. The, when he swings across that that um, mall yeah, right. and lands in the elevator. So that night. So again, I thought Schwarzenegger is going to grab the rope and swing it, but there was no net or anything. It was like. So this stunt guy shows up. He wasn't a stunt guy. He was a little tiny guy like that big. And I said, what? Well, Schwarzenegger's huge and muscular. What do you do? He says, I'm a circus trapeze guy. I'm the only guy that can get on that thing and fly across there with no net. And I said, but they're going to know. Like, you don't look anything at all like him. He said, don't worry. When I'm going so fast across there, they'll never know. And I'll drop right on that elevator. It was so complicated because that was all again. No, now it would be CGI. You would just, you would just set up a green screen and have a guy fly on a rope across the green screen with a, with mats on the ground, and there'd be no danger, and and you could just add the rest of it right in. It would be so simplistic. But here we actually, you know, put a pull, put uh, like a circus. We put a whole rope across there, and yet, yet he, he swang on that rope right across there through the air. As the elevator came down and landed on it, it was like amazing stunt, you know, right on the spot. Crazy. Yeah. Where do you think? Uh, where do you think Valverde is located? The secret island of Valverde, which is uh, the secret also secret country. The country of Valverde, which is. Also featured in Predator or Die Hard 2, but where is it located? Oh, in California. <laughs> yeah. California? But how really? come it does take 12 hours to fly from <laughs> L.A.? You know what they say? Well, it's just supposed to be off the coast for all those Channel Islands. Oh, really? In California, <laughs> but we couldn't film. The interesting thing is, we we originally were going to film. In Palace, but like right in LA, right by Malibu, down the coast there a little bit, and we were blowing up those buildings. And the Coastal Commission, they had all these environmentalists wouldn't let us shoot it. So again, like three days before, <coughs> you can't shoot there. So we were scrambling to find a beach, and the only beach that would let us film was a private. That private beach is San Simeon, owned by William Randall Hearst. Where have you heard of Hearst Castle? Yes. You know, Citizen Kane. Where, so there's on top of that hill is this giant castle. And we, he let us use this uh, beach and the pier and everything. That was all done at William Randall Hearst Estate in uh, Northern California, South Central California. <coughs> okay, uh, I have a question that I think all of these people have wondered when they're watching Commando uh, in. Sunset Motel. There is a scene uh, when Arnold kicks Cook through the door to the next door, and what we see there, uh, there is a young couple <laughs> having sex, and and there is there is actually camera. Uh, they are filming. They're they're having sex. But what the fuck is going on? Because that couple is under the blanket. The guy is bending over. Uh, front of the girl there there is this this girl who is is behind this guy what the fuck is going on there because this this is this is one thing it's only thing that is bothering me when i'm watching commando i don't know what they're doing that was the producer's girlfriend or dad oh really all right so they just showed up with their oh she's going to she's going to make it yeah oh okay Eva something. So like, do something like we do when we are go we're yeah. at home. That yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, so what was the code of uh, John Matrix gun closet? What was what? The code. Come on, oh, one and three. <laughs> No, I think it's uh, one, one, three, three. No, yeah, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. three. One, three. Just one, three. Yeah, so, I know that. What's the answer? I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, I don't think you see him. You see him 
pushing two buttons, yeah. one tree, and then he opens it. That is very important. <laughs> this is very yes. What was the sandwich? Or no, did they know? No. I don't know, that was a good question. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what it was in there. Peanut butter, I think, but I don't know. She was talking about Actually, the the in the Galleria scene in the gal in the scene in the in the mall there when he killed when he takes off after swinging on the elevator and takes off, the studio showed up, the studio executive showed up and they said, "Listen, you know, we have to explain his background." The same thing you said. Where did he come from? What, what did he do before? Where did he fight in all these missions? Who is John Matrix? How did he get his name and all that? I said, is anybody really going to care? Well, obviously. <laughs> 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 like, yes. And so, yes, people are going to care. We, we want to know. So I said, well, what do you want me to do? Here's the pages. So they hand me like five pages. And it's this whole description of him. I say, well, who, who's going to say all this? They say, Kirby. He shows up. I think he's in there now. He shows up now. Yeah. He shows up, and he's going to tell all the men there, read this whole speech about, he's going to say, John Kirk, John Matrix was here, and do you guys know that he's blah, 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 blah. And he talks for five minutes. <laughs> so I'm, the studio says, you have to film this. I thought, oh my God, this is really going to be terrible. But I did. I filmed it. I filmed this scene, exactly what you're saying. Is and it in I there? I the um, director's DVD. Yeah. It's a deleted scene. So if you want to see that scene, it's, it's, on, the, on, the, it's on the DVD. I put it on there. I found the footage. I had them get the footage. I said, you get, the, you get now to have your scene, and it's on there. And, um, and I also added the, the director's DVD has different lines, different one-liners. I changed them out because they wanted like some different stuff. Otherwise, it's not a new cut of the movie. So it's like six minutes new stuff plus the um, director's cut plus this deleted scene. And the other thing that's interesting is the in the original in the movie there was um, they make love in the plane going to the island, okay, but, so in the script, they had a love scene, and they're going to the island, it's like, studio's like, well, it kind of diverts him from getting his girl, what are people going to say, you know, he's after his daughter, but why is he stopping to have sex with this, this girl he meets, so, but the original script, she was a white girl, right, so we interviewed, like, every white actress girl in Hollywood, like, Sharon Stone, Nicole Kidman, they were all like young. All of these actresses, and they also, we don't want to play with Arnold, we're not, we're big time, we want to do, he's not dramatic enough. Nobody wanted to be in a scene with, nobody wanted to do the movie with him, strangely enough. But later, obviously, Sharon Stone did, did movies with him and so. So, then this Ray Dong Chung came in, and um, she was great, because she had the whole comedic ability. And she worked out perfect because then that eliminated the love scene because in those days the southern drive-ins and the southern movie theaters in the American South wouldn't play a movie if there was black and white sex. So they said, well, you have to cut the sex scene because we'll never get the movie in the theaters in the southern states, the United States. Kind of interesting <laughs> historical American thing. Thanks a lot. Yeah. 
uh, there is two references to Finland in this movie. Uh, first, Arnold is using M78 a battle rifle in the end, and then there is a, a Patria Enterprises, the place they they are going into before the going to uh, this island. Uh, is this just? Did you wrote this? Did, is this? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Th there is two two things about the film. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The patria, the the actually company, is oh, in I Finland. See. In Finland, in in there is a patria company, which is uh, making guns and selling to the oh, military. Really didn't pick that up. Yeah. You didn't know that. No. Okay, no. and and no. the gun Arnold Ar Ar is using right. is actually we finished gun. We pulled all this stuff from the what was the Nicaraguan Contra thing that was going on at the okay. time. Okay, really. Ronald Reagan and supplying the, you know, the Nicaraguans. So we thought, and they were training them on an island off the coast of California. So I said, let's put that in there, and there'd be an island with this dictator. So that came from like a current news thing that was happening. Ah, oh, okay. On the back, who's been holding his kind of for, for five minutes. First of all, thank you for an excellent movie. But I have one question for you. Were you ever considering doing a sequel? Because I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was hired to do it, but there have been sequels announced through the years, even currently. the uh, One of the guys that his father owned the studio at the time, John Davis, his father was Marvin Davis. He, he just told me he's, it's announced if you look at. You Google it, they've announced the sequel, but they've been doing that for years and years, and no one's, I've read about the bad script, but no one's ever come up with a sequel, but they say now they're just gonna do a remake of the exact movie with different actors. But I don't know, I don't know if you can capture the, the it's kind of got that campy charm from that era that doesn't, it wouldn't exist now, you know, with all the CGI you'd have to do and this kind of stuff. Have you seen the Russian remake about the Commando, the D-Den? You know the movie? No, no. Really? No. Okay, there is actually a Russian remake uh, in the 2000. They made like in 10, year, 10 years ago. Yeah, well this series Taken is almost identical, you know. With the daughter, it's almost identical. Yeah. But um, going back to the sequel slash remake subject, uh, <clears throat> if you were ever to make one yourself, who would you cast now in, in, in this watchmaker role? I don't know, there's no, he's such a unique character. Yeah, I don't know anybody like him. Peter Dinklage. Don, Don Johnson, <laughs> or, or what's his name? Uh, Wayne Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, people like that, I guess, would be similar. He doesn't Yeah, he doesn't. It's just a once in a lifetime moment in Schwarzenegger's career, you know. These things just magically happen. Can you explain it? Exactly. And these things magically happen that uh, Mark Lester uh, arrived in Finland. Yeah. To, uh, Yes. Talk to you guys, so let's give him a big applause.